In Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, players duel as characters from the anime and use skills to alter the state of the duel in often critical ways. Some skills are generic and useful in many decks, some are designed to address specific issues in one deck, and some are so bad, no one playing strategically would ever use them. And at number 10, we have Life Point Boost Delta. This generic skill increases your starting life points by 3500 at the start of the duel, but reduces your starting hand by 3 cards, which in Duel Links is basically your entire hand. Very broadly speaking, when you're dueling, your goal is to win, and cards help you do that. Life points can help you hang around for an extra few turns, but you'll never win from life point gain alone. There are several other variants of life point boost skills, which impact your life points and starting hand size by different amounts. There's even a skill called Life Point Boost Omega, which increases your life points by 5,000 at the start with the cost of starting with no hand, which might seem worse, but actually has more potential use than Life Point Boost Delta. Some decks benefit from having no cards in hand, particularly the Infernity Archetype, and specifically Infernity Arcfiend, which allows you to special summon it when it's drawn and add an Infernity card from your deck to your hand when it's special summoned but you can only use these effects if you have no other cards in your hand. Running an Infernity deck with Lifepoint Boost Omega gives you a 30% chance of drawing into either Infernity Arcfiend or Infernity Launcher, both of which allow you to ignite your engine. Even in a deck that benefits from having less cards in hand, Lifepoint Boost Delta turns your most important searchers into a dead draw. The other Lifepoint Boost skills are all quite bad and could find a place on this list, with the exception of Lifepoint Boost Alpha, which increases your star life points by 1000 with no cost, but Life Point Boost Delta is the worst generic skill with the least applications. So it will represent its lineup while the rest of the list will go over the other skills that are bad in more specific and interesting ways. And today's video is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh has 40 weekly recipes to choose from for all meal occasions, lifestyles, and preferences. Moving into fall, I've been craving some seasonal foods, and HelloFresh has a fresh fall lineup of delicious dinners and more to choose from. You can take your pick from up to 40 weekly recipes that suit your lifestyle, from veggies to family-friendly to fit and wholesome. And because I'm so busy with my various channels, I'm always looking to find quick meals that don't take too much time to prepare. Luckily, with HelloFresh, you can just stock your fridge with easy breakfasts, quick lunches, and fresh snacks. Just shop HelloFresh Market and add any of these tasty, time-saving solutions to your weekly box. One of the best parts of HelloFresh is how fresh the ingredients are and how long they last. Sometimes I hang on to my meals for a few days before cooking them or I space out the meals, and thankfully the ingredients stay fresh and don't sour quickly. When you get HelloFresh, you know you're getting top-notch produce since it travels from the farm to your door in less than 7 days. If you're curious about HelloFresh and want to experience cooking a home-cooked meal with ease, use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use PogDuelSep50 for 50% off plus free shipping. Click the link in the video description or scan the QR code on screen with your phone. And at number 9, we have Smile Bright, a skill that causes your opponent to take 50 damage at the beginning of your turn, but won't activate if your opponent has 1,000 or left life points. This skill is exclusive to a character called Scud from Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Side of Dimensions, and if you don't remember who Scud is, don't worry. That's just because Aigami erased him from the existence during the Dark Side Dimensions movie, going as far as to even erase people's memories of Scud. In fact, upon unlocking Scud from Duel Links, he is distressed at his return from a bleak on existence, which could be kinda scary. But what's not scary is his skill, Smile Bright. The most conventional way to win in a duel in Yu-Gi-Oh! is to reduce your opponent's life points to zero, which Smile Bright does help with. However, 50 life points per turn is not very useful in a high-speed game where most duels end with a handful of turns. You'd have to not lose and not win for 60 turns in order for Smile Bright to hit its maximum potential of 3,000 damage, an outcome that is very unlikely with a main deck limit of 30 cards. Additionally, Smile Bright will never win a game for you because it cannot damage an opponent who has less than a thousand life points anyway. Its death of a thousand cuts does embody Scud's sadistic personality, and the way he would film his cronies beating up students to sell for money. And at number 8, we have Reversal of Fate, a skill used by Satoris Kumar, an antagonist in the OGX whose mind was dominated by the Light of Destruction, a primal force of unbridled annihilation that explodes forever in the far reaches of space in the GX universe. Fittingly, in duels, Satoris uses the Arcana Force archetype of light fairy monsters that draw their inspiration from the major Arcana of tarot cards and the cosmic horrors of mythos popularized by H.P. Lovecraft and others. To illustrate the alien and unknowable nature of these cards, each one revolves around two effects chosen via coin flips with the head's effect typically being beneficial to the player and the tail's effect being bad. In the show, Satorius demonstrates his power over destiny when he's able to correctly predict which effect his Arcana Force monsters will display, and uses his knowledge to tailor his strategy while dueling. In practice, the Arcana Force monsters are quite awful. Being unable to predict the outcome of your own effect is a steep drawback. To address this massive failing of the archetype, which is also the entire mechanic of the archetype, Duel Links provides several skill options designed to make Arcana Force more viable. 
This leads us to Reversal of Fate, which, twice per duel, allows you to select one of your Arcana Force monsters and change its current effect to the opposite coin toss result. This is a good effect and only lands a spot on this list because of the existence of a skill called Right Side Up, which makes it so that your Arcana Force monsters will always resolve their positive heads effects at no cost. Both skills are intended to reduce the volatility of the Arcana Force archetype, but Right Side Up is so much better that you'd have almost no reason to ever use Reversal of Fate. Almost no reason, because there is one Arcana Force monster, the Hangman, which does the opposite of the other cards in its archetype, and has a negative heads effect and a positive tails one. Additionally, the two Arcana Force boss monsters each have two positive effects, and you might prefer their tails effects over their heads. Arcana Force the Moon also has a tails effect. During each of your end phases, select one monster you control and give it to your opponent. You could conceivably gain some advantage in this effect by giving your opponent a tails effect the Empress, which requires a discard a card every time the opposing player normal summons. But because the Moon's effect activates during the end phase, you're unlikely to ever realize any benefit from the strategy as your opponent will likely use whatever you give them as material for an extra deck summon. And at number 7, we have Try to Counter My Moves, a skill used by Solar Purse from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 that, once per duel, allows you to boost a fright for a fusion monster's attack by 500 until the end of your turn. But during your opponent's next turn, their monsters all gain 500 attack. Gaining 500 attack is a good effect, and there are a range of good fright for fusion monsters. Part of what makes this skill so bad is the penalty that causes your opponent's monsters to gain attack as well. This skill gives you a 500 boost to attack to one specific monster, and gives your opponent a potential attack gain of 2000 across their whole board. Even without this penalty, you'd be far better off running a generic skill that provides a similar benefit with less restrictions and costs, such as beatdown or the tie that binds. This skill lands at number 7 because the initial attack boost might let you push for game, especially if you control a monster like Fright for a Wolf, which has the potential to attack multiple times. Just make sure you secure the W before you enter your phase. Also, in the Arc 5 anime, Sora's overconfidence can lead him to underestimate his opponents and misplay. In this regard, Try to Counter My Moves can help you lose duels in a way that's authentic to Sora, and that's fun. At number 6, we have Weevil Underwood's exclusive skill, Moth to the Flame. Weevil was one of Yugi's first opponents in the original Duel Monster series, and his strategy in the Duelist Kingdom art revolved around Great Moth, a non-effect beat stick with restrictive summon conditions barely stronger than Yugi's Ace Dark Magician and Summon Skull. The intended purpose of Moth of the Flame is to make Weevil's Insects boss monsters Great Moth, and the even stronger, perfectly ultimate Great Moth, more viable within Duel Links. Technically, it succeeds in doing that, but still earns a spot on this list because the summon condition of these monsters remain absolutely atrocious. Under normal circumstances, summoning perfectly ultimate Great Moth requires 3 cards and 6 turns, as you equip Petite Moth, a level 1 vanilla, with 200 attack and 300 defense with Cocoon of Evolution from your hand causing the stats of Petite Moth to copy those of Cocoon of Evolution at 0 attack and 2,000 defense. There are three monsters that can then special summon themselves from your hand by tributing Petite Moth to equip a Cocoon of Evolution based on how many turns they have stayed on the field. At two turns, you can summon Larva Moth, a level 2 insect with 500 attack and 400 defense. At four turns, you can summon Great Moth, a level 8 insect with 2,600 attack and 2,500 defense. And finally, after six turns, Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, a level 8 insect with 3,500 attack and 3,000 defense, can be special summon from the hand. Moth to the Flame simplifies the time and resource intensive process by doubling the speed of the turn count for Petite Moth, equipped with Cocoon of Evolution. Additionally, Larva Moth, Great Moth, and Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth are added to your hand from outside your deck in the order listed on subsequent turns. This reduces the cost to summon Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth to two cards in three turns, which is better, but still suboptimal in every situation since the moths can be cheated out with Cocoon of Ultra Evolution and Insector Monsters. The only reason this skill isn't even higher in this list is because Duel Links requires players to summon Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth in order to progress their Duel Monster stage level from 59 to 60, and also gives you an emblem of the monster to reward you for suffering the insanity of summoning it, and using Moth of the Flame will help you achieve these goals faster. At number 5, we have a skill exclusive to Carly Carmine from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, Going Undercover. Once per duel, this skill allows you to bury one Fortune Fairy monster from your hand into your opponent's deck. When that monster is drawn, it is sent to the graveyard. The Fortune Fairies are an archetype of spellcaster monsters that revolve around the mechanic of automatically activating their effects when they're drawn, a playstyle that embodies Carly Carmine's ability to make connections and predictions in her job as an investigative journalist. By using Going Undercover, you can potentially neutralize one of your opponent's draw phases at the cost of one Fortune Fairy from your hand. What makes this skill bad is how low the chance is that your opponent will ever draw that card on a given turn. Unless you're very lucky, this will just make you go minus one for no advantage. But it is fitting since luck is the most vital resource in a fortune fairy deck. And at number 4, we have Return from Another Dimension, a skill that's exclusive to Declan Akaba from the Yu Gi Oh! Arc 5. You can only activate this skill when you have only DD monsters in your deck and extra deck, and 20 plus currently banished DD monsters. If you can pull that off, this skill allows you to set Return from Another Dimension from outside your deck. 
but during the turn you use the skill, you're locked out of using spell or trap cards. This skill, if you activate it, is actually quite beneficial. Return from the Dimension is a normal trap card that's pretty good, and can spell to summon as many of your banished monsters as possible at the cost of half your life points. However, during the next end phase, all monsters special summoned by this effect are banished again. The trouble with this skill lies in its activation cost. Again, the deck limit in Duel Links is 30 cards, with many players electing to keep their decks to a minimum of 20 to better their chances of drawing key combo pieces. Banishing 20 of your own cards without decking out or otherwise losing the duel is very difficult, and that's without only using monsters from the DD archetype. Even if you find a way to activate this skill, there's a strong chance you'll have to use your return from the new dimension to survive your opponent's turn, which will cause any advantage you might generate to disappear during the end phase. Overall, this skill is ridiculously bad best case scenario, a minus 16 in card advantage when used intentionally, and otherwise almost impossible to activate. And at number 3, we have a skill exclusive to Jesse Anderson from the Yugo GX, Meet My Family. The intended use of this card is to help you summon Rainbow Dragon by shuffling a copy of it and 7 other Crystal Beasts to your deck at the start of the duel. The most used skill in Duel Links often boosts consistency, allowing you to access your most important cards with greater reliability. Meet My Family does the opposite of this. With the exception of Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus, which has a useful effect on Normal Summon, the Crystal Beasts rely on their spell and trap cards and in Duel Links better skills like Transcendental Crystals to kick off their combos. While Beat My Family could allow you to dedicate extra deck spaces to other cards, you'd have to already run 22 plus cards in your main deck for the skill to create a game state that couldn't be made organically while also just using a better skill. In almost all situations, Meet My Family makes it harder to draw your key cards and increase your chances of bricking. And in number 2, we have Trap Search. This skill is usable by Aspa Roba from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters. It's intended to make the effect of Jinzo mimic how it worked in the anime. Jinzo is a level 6 Dark Machine monster that has the effect of blanketly negating all trap cards. With the Trap Search skill, you can, once per duel if you control Jinzo, take this effect a step further by destroying all trap cards your opponent controls. Destroying your opponent's traps is usually good, and this skill might be useful in the niche cases where your opponent's continuous traps might have been negated but not destroyed, and Jinzo needs to leave your field. However, what makes this skill instead so bad is how the Jinzo archetype of monsters interacts with trap cards to gain advantage. Many Jinzo cards gain utility from your opponent's traps. Jinzo Lord, a level 8 Dark Machine archetype boss monster that can be summoned by sending a face of Jinzo to the graveyard, can destroy all face of trap cards and burn your opponent for 300 damage for each card destroyed by the effect. Jinzo Layered is a rank 6 Dark Machine Xyz monster that can take control of an opponent's monster, and then if a trap card is in the field, you can tribute a monster to destroy a face-up card in the field. Finally, Psychic Mega Cyper is a level 6 Dark Machine that can spell to summon itself from your hand if your opponent controls more spell and traps than you. When it declares an attack on an opponent's effect monster while you control Jinzo, you can tribute it and place your opponent's monster in the spell and trap card zone as a continuous trap card. This is a pretty complicated effect, but it's designed to generate advantage by giving you non-targeting removal of an opponent's monster and sticking them with a non-effect trap card that helps you resolve the effects of Jinzo Layered and Jinzo Lord. There are even skills for the Jinzo archetypes, such as Supernatural Tactics, that are much better revolve around giving your opponent trap cards. The skill secures number 2 spawn this list because by using Trap Search, you're actively making it more difficult to attain the win conditions of its intended deck. And before we go to number 1 spot, we have an honorable mention that goes to the Road to the Pro League, a skill used by Joey Wheeler from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Dark Side Dimensions. This skill increases the dual assessment score from your tribute summons. Outside of your turn, your dual assessment score determines how many rewards you receive for completing the match. Normally, performing a tribute summon nets you 300 dual assessment points per summon, but with this skill, that number is increased to 450 for an extra of 150 points. This has very limited applications, as you receive an additional reward for every 1000 dual assessment score, capped out at 8 rewards. None of the rewards are very good, and there are better ways to farm dual assessment score if what you're looking for is to procure cards from legendary duelists or roaming events. This skill might promise almost nothing but is the only way to artificially prop up your dual assessment outside of consumable items, and only gets an honorable mention here because this list focuses on skills that are bad for how they work, or don't work, within the duels. And coming to number one of the worst dueling skills is one with the dinos. This skill is uniquely usable to Tyrannal Hasselberry from the UOGX, and is activated from turn 3 onward by selecting one level 7 or higher dinosaur monster you control. The attack and defense of that dino become equal to your life points, but if it leaves the field, you lose the duel. This skill illustrates Houseberry's strong bond with dinosaurs. It makes sense that he loses when the chosen dino leaves the field, because he is part dinosaur himself. In the anime, Houseberry was injured as a child while hunting for fossils, unable to walk, and modern science restored him to health by surgically implanting a dino bogue into his leg. With his skill one with dinos, you and Houseberry and your chosen dino are one. 
with the fantasy being reinforced by the chosen monster's attack becoming equal to your life points. This can be very cool and fun, but is not useful if your goal is winning duels. By devoting resources to increasing your life points, you might succeed in committing a very strong damage to the board, but this is a pale benefit compared with giving your opponent a new and easily attainable win condition. One with the dinos itself provides no protection to your chosen monster, which can make winning for your opponent as easy as activating one copy of Offerings to the Doom or Compulsory Evacuation Device or Enemy Controller, or any number of removal effects. Even if you already have protection built in your back row or in your chosen dinos effect, you've still made winning easier for your opponent. Generally, players win duels by removing monsters from your opponent's field and then attacking to reduce the life points to zero in that order. One with the dinos removes your life point cushion. All your opponent has to do is deal with this one card. There are very few skills that create alternative win conditions for you in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, such as the Exodia win condition in Grandpa's cards and with Yami Bakura's Destiny board. But only one skill out of the over 550 creates a new win condition for your opponent, and that's what earns a one with the dinos the top spot on this list. Alright, and that's the list. If you know of any other bad skills I might have missed, or have any ideas for future videos like this one, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments.